In today's video, I'll be introducing Zap, a minimal ZSH plugin manager designed to be fast, easy to use, and understand. Before we get started, make sure you're using ZSH as your current interactive shell. You can check if ZSH is currently active by echoing the shell environment variable in your terminal. You should see something like slash bin slash ZSH or slash user bin slash ZSH. If you don't know how to install or enable ZSH, I'll leave a link in the description to help you out. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. You can head over to zapzsh.org and copy the install script. If you don't want to run the script immediately or want to see what it does, you can head over to the open source repository and download and read the install script for yourself. But the easiest way to get started is just to copy this command, head over to your terminal, paste it in, and press enter. After installation, if you already have a ZSHRC config file, it will be backed up as .zshrc with an underscore followed by the date and time. Here is an example of what that might look like. In my case, this is the backup from an earlier install, and here is my new ZSHRC file that Zap created. The replacement file will include some plugins to help you get started. You should notice that the prompt is changed to a lightning bolt. Syntax highlighting is enabled, so earlier you can see that we did ls-a and the ls is green, which means that it's a valid command. If I type in some nonsense, it will be red, indicating that this command doesn't exist on your system. Another helpful plugin that we bundled is auto-suggestion. So if I type CD and capital R, it is auto-suggesting that I might want to go to the repos directory here. And you can press the right arrow key to accept the suggestion. To see which plugins are being used, you can open up your new ZSHRC file and take a look at the simple syntax Zap uses to install new plugins. which is just plug followed by the repo of the ZSH plugin you want to install. I'll leave a link to all the plugins used in this config in the description. But from here, you can feel free to remove some of the plugins that we bundled with the installation or add some of your own. Now let's talk about some of the various functionalities Zap provides in addition to installing new plugins. At any time, you can just type Zap and press enter in your terminal to see a help menu. Let's talk about updating first. To update a specific plugin, all your plugins, or Zap itself, you can run Zap Update, which will show you a prompt where you can make a decision about which plugins you want to update. So for instance, if I wanted to update the Zapped prompt, I could press 3. If I wanted to update Zap itself, I could press 0. And if I wanted to update all of the plugins, I could press A. If you want to see which plugins you have installed, you can use the zap list command. This will simply just show you a quick list of the plugins that you have installed. If you happen to comment out or remove a plugin from your ZSHRC and you want to remove all of the files associated with that plugin, you can use the zap clean command. So for instance, I'll open up my ZSHRC and remove a plugin. In this case, we'll remove supercharge save and close the file. Now I'll close and reopen my terminal and run zap clean. Zap will prompt you and ask you if you're sure you want to remove the plugin and you can press Y or N to either accept or reject removing the plugin. And that is pretty much it for the introduction to Zap. Again, Zap is a minimalist plugin manager. It tries to do as little as possible to handle installing and managing your plugins for you. If you would like to contribute to Zap or read over the code, I'll leave a link in the description. The Zap code base is very small and should be very easy to understand. You can head over to the Zap repo here and take a look at zap.zsh. That's pretty much all of the code for Zap and read through it yourself. There's only about 150 lines of code, so it shouldn't be that hard to read over it and understand what it does. Another good way to contribute would be to create a plugin and add it to what we're calling the Zap outlet which is a list of plugins available for ZSH. You can find the outlet by heading over to zapzsh.org and scrolling down the page a little bit to reveal a gallery of plugins in no particular order that you can install with Zap. Additionally, I would also like to thank all of the contributors to Zap who have made important contributions, fixed bugs, and raised issues that have helped the project to become what it is today. 
Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified when I post new videos. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below and I'll try to respond to as many as possible. You can also join the community on Discord for more discussion. If you would like to support me and my channel, consider joining the channel as a member or sponsoring me over on GitHub or check out the donation page at chrisatmachine.com slash donate. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.